Welcome back. Kevin Dahlgren isn't your typical homeless advocate. The Portland area drug counselor has spent 25 years dealing with people on the streets and advising cities and counties on the subject. He's gotten national attention by arguing that cities and social service agencies are enabling homelessness and fostering dependency among the people they say they're trying to help. Kevin Dahlgren, thanks for being here on Eye on Northwest Politics. Thanks for having me. Simple question, what are we getting wrong in Oregon when it comes to dealing with the homeless problem? Well, I will say I've uh, been doing homeless outreach in Portland, Oregon for 28 plus years. And what we're getting wrong is the crisis continues to grow as the budgets grow. And um, I've seen over the last two decades as what once was a cause is we really become this multi-million dollar industry. We enable, we do not empower these individuals to uh, reach their fullest potential. So what we're getting wrong is we're not actually helping these individuals thrive. We're simply uh, loving them to death out there. And I've witnessed this personally dozens and dozens of times. We just really need to pivot and just change the way we approach this crisis. You just heard uh, Representative uh, and House Majority Leader Julie Fahey. What do you think of the $200 million homeless package that the legislature did pass? Well, I appreciate, first of all, that she said it's uh, that we need to question the status quo. It's something some of us have been saying for years is the status quo is not working. And I also say with the $200 million, if money were the solution, we would have already solved it by now. And having done this for a couple decades now, hearing how more money is thrown towards the problem always frustrates me. But I am at least cautiously optimistic this time because the right people are saying the right things that, quite, that you know, we need measurable results and uh, question the status quo uh, is okay now because what we've tried isn't working. So I'm just going to say I'm at least somewhat optimistic that this might work at this time. Well, it sounds <laughs> like uh, you would uh, agree with uh, Governor Kotek's insistence that Portland and Multnomah County come up with more specific plans. Absolutely agree. I was surprised, but I was like, wow, thank you. This is about time. You know, um, I think for the longest time, counties like, well, I'll just say Multnomah County, always just receive the money without any sort of expectations or accountability or oversight or anything. And finally, people are saying, stop. How are you spending the money and how are you going to solve this? Because the fact is, over the last seven years since uh, the Joint Office of Homeless Services was established, our crisis has gone through the roof. So as more money is poured into solving this problem, the problem continues to grow, which means money isn't the solution. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the Joint Office of Homeless Services just hired a new director, yeah. uh, and they've gone through a couple already since it was formed. Uh, our, investigators, uh, our investigative reporter, Dan Tilkin, he recently did a report about fully built cabins mm -hmm. that are on the river, on the banks of the Willamette River. You went to that area yourself and took a look at it. Uh, what did you find, and what were your impressions of that? It's quite amazing. I mean, I, I called it a few days ago dystopian because it took me a few hours to find. I mean, you really almost have to get there by boat. But I, walking for a couple hours, I did find the entry point and walked in there, counted nine cabins. Some of them clearly had taken years to be built. Uh, a lot of the cabins were built out of thousands of pieces of driftwood. And really what was shocking is how much time it took to build these cabins and how somehow uh, this was overlooked for so many years. So if you think about this, uh, that stuff like this is allowed to happen because of just the lack of outreach, the lack of oversight, the lack of attention of what's actually going on on the street level. And of course, I'd also say that this is the natural result when a government does nothing to solve this crisis, the homeless will adapt and, and build their own homes. How much is fentanyl impacting the homeless problem? You're a drug and alcohol counselor. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, I am a drug and alcohol counselor, and fentanyl has changed the game. Uh, it's 50 times stronger than heroin. Uh, it's virtually replaced all other drugs on the streets. In fact, even people who use other drugs are using it laced with fentanyl. And I would say 80% of all the homeless on the streets of, let's just say, uh, Portland, Oregon, have a history of addiction and are very likely using fentanyl. I'm out there every day. Overdoses and deaths are very common. It's devastating. And this is why I'm very much opposed to Measure 110, the decriminalization of, 
de decriminalization of drugs is the worst thing we could have ever done. You know, we have given people with, uh, who lack critical thinking and rational thought the ability to use now as much as they want. And what it's doing is it's killing them. So something I'm not okay with. Go out to the streets, it's devastating what I'm seeing every day. So if we're doing this wrong, what do we need to do to get it right? Well, step one is let's start with the outreach. I've been uh, interviewing the homeless, as you know, the last couple years, and 95% of the time, the homeless I meet uh, in Multnomah County tell me, Kevin, you're the first home, uh, outreach person to talk to me ever, hmm. ever. So think about that. Where are the outreach workers? Because that is step one to solving this crisis, is going out there every day, building that trust, building that rapport, bringing back hope. That is step one because there's a strong mistrust in the system and it's just simply not happening. Yes, there are outreach teams, but there's not enough. It's quite rare. I challenge anyone to walk up to a homeless person and be like, when's the last time a person approached you and offered you services, offered you housing? It's quite rare and that's very concerning. So, you know, our system oftentimes talks about affordable housing, like that's gonna end homelessness. Well, that's like step eight or nine of the process. Step one is the approach. It's building that trust. That's not happening. If we don't do this, it doesn't matter what we're doing on step eight or nine. We have to start there. Uh, I know you're concentrating on Portland, but Clackamas County Commissioners recently approved buying a motel off I-205 for transitional housing. And then uh, Clackamas County Chair Tootie Smith reversed her vote, yeah. and they decided not to go ahead with that plan. Uh, what did you think of the original plan to actually buy a motel for transitional housing? And then what do you think of the reversal in Clackamas County? It was not a good plan. It was one motel. It was under the housing first model where you house a person without any expectations. And then once they're in there, there's no wraparound type care services. So it's really not solving the problem. It's just hiding the problem. So I respect what Chair Smith did. Uh, they just, um, passed a homeless resolution in Clackamas County, which is a pivot from the normal housing first model that Oregon has adopted to a recovery model. And a recovery model is needed because if 80% of everybody on the streets has a history of addiction, we need to start there, right? And, uh, and it's important to say this is less of a homeless issue or a housing issue. This is a drug issue. This is a mental health issue. We tackle those issues first the homeless piece is gonna be a lot easier to solve. And so I respect what Clackamas County has done. You should look up the resolution on their website. It's amazing. You've got about 30 seconds here, but uh, while we're thinking about, you know, the homeless issue, trying to solve it, uh, are people listening to what you have to say, the people who actually can make the decisions to make a difference? People are starting to listen. There's been a handful of us the last couple of years have been very vocal. And just the fact that Governor Kotek and uh, this representative said, let's question the status quo. It's not working. We need measurable results. That's something we've never heard before. So things are changing. The right people are listening, and that gives me hope. Thank you very much, Kevin Dahlgren. We appreciate you joining us on Ion Northwest Politics, and we'll be right back.